Are you guys looking for a micro server that is energy efficient, a small footprint, and yet powerful enough to run self-hosted services using something like Proxmox? Well, there are many interesting options out there and available today. However, I'm going to show you guys a mini PC that I've been playing around with in my home lab that may just be the perfect fit for those that want an energy efficient, self-hosted Proxmox server. Feast your eyes on this mini PC. It's the B-Link Mini S12 Pro. And I really have enjoyed working with this unit for the past few days in the home lab. Let's take a look at the hardware specs. The B-Link Mini S12 Pro features a lot of really great hardware features and those that you would look for in running a self-hosted home server using something like Proxmox. First and foremost, it features the Intel N100 CPU. And frankly, this CPU is not going to win a benchmark contest with other more powerful CPUs. That's not really its bread and butter. However, the N100 is an extremely efficient and powerful CPU for what it does. It sports four cores and four threads, and it has a TDP value of 15 watts that will burst up to 25 watts when running turbo. The B-Link Mini S12 Pro also features DDR5 memory. Now the unit that I had purchased features 16 gigs of DDR5 memory. Now this is a better configuration from a memory perspective. If you saw my review and overview of the GMK G2 NUC box that I've been also playing around with in the home lab, it also features the N100 CPU. However, it only had 12 gigs of DDR5 memory in my testing of Proxmox. The B-Link Mini S12 Pro also features a standard 2280 NVMe slot that you can change out with standard NVMe drives. And frankly, that's the first thing that I changed out when I received the unit. It comes preloaded actually with Windows 11 Pro. So I wanted to just maintain the OS on the factory NVMe drive. So I swapped it out with a Samsung Evo 970 that I had laying around on the desk. Now, aside from the CPU and memory, one of the other critical components when we're thinking about hosting and a home server solution is networking. In this side of things, it's a bit limited. We have a single gigabit network LAN port on this unit, and it's also a Realtek adapter. That's why the premise of this video is around Proxmox. If you're thinking about running something like VMware vSphere, this is probably not the unit that you want to go with. The Realtek network adapters are not supported in the latest versions of VMware ESXi. You'll have to do something like a USB network adapter if you want to have uh, this particular unit or any other mini PC with a Realtek controller uh, running ESXi for your home server. So keep that in mind. This is probably better suited for something like Proxmox or XEPNG. I had begun with the GMK Tech G2 NUC box, and now I've migrated over to the B-Link Mini S12 Pro with four more gigs of memory. So I wanted to see just how dense of an environment I could get in a Proxmox installation, including LXD containers as well as virtual machines. So let me show you guys uh, what I was able to spin up. I've got the Proxmox environment set up on this unit. I've got a total of five LXC containers, and then I have 10 virtual machines that are running Ubuntu Server 2204, as you can see, 01 through 10. And then I also have just a one-off Windows 10 box just to mix things up a bit. This little guy is humming along without issue. We've got 8.89 gigs of memory used out of the 16 gigs total that we have. I just kind of click around and show you guys how responsive the unit is. One thing I'm going to do is run some updates. I'm going to kick this off on a couple of LXC containers just to show you guys how responsive the unit is and how well it deals with uh, work being presented to it. So 
but I, I wanted you guys to see just how well the B-Link Mini S12 Pro handles uh, some virtual workloads that are being uh, thrown at it. And one of the things to note is I don't have a benchmark utility running. However, I think tests like this are more real world. In a home lab, you're going to have workloads running, you're gonna have containers running, virtual machines, and for the most part, those are probably going to be sitting idle. And that's what you want. It's gonna allow that processor to kick back out of turbo and have those power saving efficiencies, especially when you're using uh, something like the N100. I think these little paths that we have going on, good examples of how well this and other mini PC type hardware is going to be able to handle workloads when you're talking about containers, self-hosted services, if you're running Pi-hole, Unbound, AdGuard, uh, the list goes on and on. You're gonna see those bursty moments of activity that will load up the CPU at times. However, for the most part, you're going to see that go up and down. You're gonna have some idle time and then those uh, moments of burstiness. I could easily, with the amount of performance and headroom that I still have once the virtual machines and everything settled down, um, I still have headroom where we could actually clone additional machines. We're starting to peek into that higher level of RAM usage. So that most likely is going to be our bottleneck when it comes to this level of hardware. So it's just awesome to see how much we can run on this type of hardware and this efficient of a CPU at six watts TDP bursting up to 25 watts, this little PC is going to pay for itself in the amount of energy savings that you're going to see by running this hardware in your lab. But again, I think that sweet spot is no more than 10 to 12 virtual machines, uh, a handful of containers, or if you're not running any virtual machines, maybe you're just running a single virtual machine container host, you maybe could run dozens of containers on this single piece of hardware. So keep that in mind. And why would you run a hypervisor instead of running a bare metal uh, operating system? Well, one of the big reasons is backups and ease of moving around those workers. Workload. So as we know, the virtualization layer abstracts that operating system from that physical hardware. So keep that in mind as a benefit when you're thinking about purchasing something like this to run as a home server. A hypervisor certainly has its benefits there, and most likely you're going to want to experiment with those things anyway. Well, guys, this has been really fun to showcase this B-Link Mini S12 Pro unit for you guys. And I've enjoyed playing around with it in the lab environment and just seeing what this class of hardware is capable of with 16 gigs of memory and a decent amount of NVMe storage. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, keep on home labbing, stay safe out there guys, and I will see you on the next video.